Hi, NA Physics. It's Mr. Neff. Hey, I just want to go over two workbook pages with you, uh, uh, two, two bonus opportunities that I, um, I want to make sure that you see before the exam. So this first one, we have a car moving along a straight roadway, and the, the, the road's going to change depend in, in the situation. So you might have an uphill, a downhill, a flat. Um, sometimes they're going to push on the brake pedal, sometimes the gas, sometimes neither. And there's going to be energy that's going to flow. There's gasoline in the car, and so the gasoline could be converted into, uh, into kinetic energy by pushing the gas pedal. It's basically a uh, gas pedal is an energy-converting pedal, right? Uh, accelerator means a uh, positive worker. And then the brake pedal is, uh, is a, a pedal that's going to go from kinetic energy down to thermal energy. And so that's an energy converter, too. It's a negative working pedal. And so the, over here in part A, it says uh, the car is traveling downhill while the driver presses a gas pedal. So what's going to happen to this mechanical energy? Well, it's going to increase, and it's going to increase uh, because you're pressing the gas pedal. So the, if you're going downhill, the mechanical energy is being added. Somebody might say, but what about the, the potential energy is going to go down, right? Yeah, it is, it is, but it, there's going to end up being more kinetic energy uh, than even w the difference in potential energy. You can see it over here. You can see that the potential energy was, well, this big, however many blocks that is. And it's gone down to none because that we're at the bottom of the hill, and that's what we're calling height equals zero. But the kinetic energy has gone up by more than just that much. It's gone up by that much plus the amount that the chemical energy went down. So two things contributed to that kinetic energy, the loss of gravitational potential energy and the loss of chemical potential energy. Okay. The, in part B, the car's traveling uphill and the driver presses on neither pedal. So this time, the chemical energy isn't going to change. The, it's, you're not pressing on the gas pedal, so you're not you're not, uh, I, theoretically, I mean, if the engine's still on, you're, you're using some of the gasoline, but ignore that part. But the mechanical energy is going, is, um, is decreasing, right? So if the, if you're traveling uphill and the driver presses neither pedal, the energy, the mechanical energy of the car is decreasing, um, while the mechanical energy of only the car earth system is constant. So if it's only the car, now the force of gravity is external, right? And so the, and the car itself is feeling an external force. It's getting worked upon negatively by gravity, and so its mechanical energy is going to go down. But if you define the system including the Earth, now that's going to be a constant. Okay? You can see that the chemical energy is unchanged there, and for the for the car gas earth system, kinetic energy is going from something down to nothing, and that energy is basically just boom, put right next door, right into the gravitational potential spot. Okay. Going on the back of that, now in part C, mechanical energy of only the car is constant, and the mechanical energy of only the car earth system is decreasing. So the car is traveling on a road that is downhill. Right? Because the, if the mechanical energy of the car is, uh, is constant, well, then the mechanical energy of, of only the car or the system is decreasing. The only way you can do that in this case is to be going downhill, and the driver must be pressing on the brake. So see what's happening. The chemical energy is not changing. The kinetic energy and the potential energy are uh, are not changing. Now this, this, uh, sorry, I should have said this is the car gas earth system. And so the kinetic energy is, um, is staying the same, you can see there, but the potential energy is going down as we're going down the hill, we're getting closer to the ground. And so we lost some, where did that show up? It shows up right here as the thermal energy. You can read the paragraph that the College Board wrote about that. And then in our part D, we have the mechanical energy of only the car is decreasing, and the mechanical energy of only the car Earth system is increasing. So the car is traveling on a road that is uphill, and the driver is pressing on the gas pedal. 
So you can see that the chemical energy is going down. He's pressing on the gas pedal. Kinetic energy looks like it's going up. All right, so give me down and we started off high and we're going lower. The potential on the other hand is going up. We're not pushing on the brake, so the thermal energy is nothing. Here's that paragraph that explains that. Take a second and read that over. Hey, take a look at this other one. So this one is 4.0 and it's a conservation of energy and circular motion. You know, this is right up the College Board's alley. They like to mix different uh, different examples together, different concepts together. So we've got some kind of, um, of a roller coaster that's solar system themed. Kind of cool. And they have, uh, they got a Jupiter and a to scale Neptune underneath these two hills. Okay, kind of a neat idea. And uh, there, there's a there one, single cars that are going to be going on this thing. And this car is going to come down and, and go up to Q. Okay. Now, they want it to all be to scale, and so they want the radius of the, the Jupiter part and the radius of the Neptune part to be to scale the way they really are in the solar system. So uh, they're going to call the radius of the Jupiter big R and the radius of Neptune little r, although it's still bigger than, than Earth. All right, and so the, uh, the one engineer sketches this thing out. It looks pretty nice. And then the other two engineers, engineer B and C, are uh, discussing this and they say that uh, engineer B is nervous. It's that if the height difference between the top of Jupiter and the top of Neptune is too much, the cart is gonna uh, fly off the track. He's totally right, I 100% agree with him. If this, if there's way too big, if this height that you're dropping down from is way too big, um, then you're gonna be going really fast over here and you might shoot right off the track like that. Uh, engineer says, no, it's not the difference in the heights that's the problem, but the small radius of curvature of the track as it goes over Neptune. Well, you know, I, I, I don't know. I think the difference of the heights is an issue because it's the difference in the heights that really determines how fast you're going to go. That radius is important, too, um, and that radius is important to circular motion, of course, but I think, uh, I think I like what Engineer B said a lot. So write expressions for these. So we want the speed of the cart when it's at the top of the Neptune sphere. Now, hey, listen to this. The mechanical energy here and the mechanical energy here are going to be the same. I'm, I say that with confidence because the only force that's acting is the force of gravity, and that's a conservative force. And so if you have the, in your system the cart and the earth, then yeah, the mechanical energy here and the mechanical energy here are going to be uh, identical to each other. Now, thing is, it, say you're basically stopped up there and you're going to come down fast, faster, 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 and then you're going to get to this point. You're going to get a little slower here, but you're still going to have a good bit of kinetic energy. So you're going to have potential energy at P and potential and kinetic energy at Q, and you're going to say those two are equal to each other. And that's what they do here. So they say mechanical energy at the top of Jupiter and mechanical energy at the top of Neptune are the same size. And so it's all potential up there. If you read in the, in the paragraph, it says you're going to be basically stopped up there. And then the kinetic and the gravitational uh, at the top of Neptune, they're calling them initial and final. And so uh, MGH for each one of those potential energies and then one half mv squared. And so they solve for the V and they got this nice expression right here. Okay, on the back. It says, uh, what's the normal force when it's at the top of the Neptune sphere? Now, this ought to remind you of when we were on circular motion, and the centripetal force was the force that was pointing towards the center minus the force that was pointing away from the center. And so, think about the free body diagram of the person here at Q, uh, a force of gravity down towards the center of the circle and a normal force up. And so that's what they have right here. Force of gravity minus normal is mass times centripetal acceleration. And so they put in that centripetal acceleration V squared over R. Now, they, uh, they just did a little algebra on that and solved for the normal, factoring out the M's. Okay. Now, they're going to take the V expression that we had from before, and they're going to place that thing right here. And you end up getting, after just a little cleaning up and factoring and so forth, I feel good that everybody here can do this, you're going to end up getting uh, mg times 5 minus 4r over r, big R, little r, is the normal force. 
Okay. So that's uh, just a little algebra and got to remember some of our circular motion stuff, but all in all, not too bad. Maybe you got that. If you are, very good. If you didn't, I'm sure that you can follow it. Maybe you could try that over again fresh. Now it says, uh, choose any step to work in a uh, step of work in part A, except the final answer, and explain how that step supports each engineer's reasoning. So uh, you, you're, there are choices here, but uh, the College Board chose the last step of part A supports engineer B's claim that if the differences of the planet's diameters is too large, the speed of that car will be large. So going back to that. So yeah, this is basically what I was saying before too, that this is the energy of, of uh, at the top of Jupiter, this is the energy at the top of Neptune, and see, right here is the difference between those two. So it, that's what he said, and that's what it was. And then uh, Engineer C said, so step four supports Engineer C's claim that if R is too small, then V squared over R becomes large, and that makes G minus V squared over R very small or possibly negative, which was when that would fall off of the track. And so you can see... Uh, engineer C's claim right here. She is right that they, yeah, that that uh, that little R could become a big problem. All right, I hope that that all made sense, and uh, it, it may be a good idea to try those over fresh if you if you didn't get there, and maybe just use this video for some hints. Thank you.